everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. I'm coming at you fresh faced with no makeup because I'm lazy and long time no YouTube. It's been a few weeks. I've had an incredibly busy time at work. I'm really excited about today's video. I've gotten the suggestion on Instagram a couple of times to make a video on this topic when I've posted about it on Instagram and I was going through footage and was like, actually, this could make a really cool video. So. I am going to talk about using positive reinforcement to counter condition spooking or fear responses. The way that I'm going to talk about it is not in terms of written work, but more groundwork because I have never used positive reinforcement in writing. But I think the principles of it still would apply to writing just in a different way um, but i'm not going to speculate on how to do this in terms of spooking when you're on the horse because i just don't have experience with that and i don't think it right for me to give advice or, or tips on something that i have no experience uh, with myself so it's mostly going to be in terms of groundwork liberty um, general handling rather than riding. I'm gonna leave most of the explanation to voice over Caitlin because I actually, because I film so many of my sessions with Merlin, just by chance, I have quite a few nice examples of how I have used positive reinforcement or clicker training as a way to help either counter condition a fear response or to help keep Merlin's sort of, um, energy levels or trigger levels below threshold so that he doesn't go over threshold and have a super big explosion. Before I get into sort of voiceover analysis of some specific situations in which I use positive reinforcement to counter condition a spook or a fear response, I want to talk a little bit about how I got to that point where that was something I could do. So I have talked about this in the past, but I got into positive reinforcement with Merlin about a year ago to help um, positively manage his stud behaviors while he was still intact. Since then it's sort of just spiraled into a training method that I really like using with him. One of the things about positive reinforcement that I have found incredibly helpful when I'm dealing with a spooky horse or Merlin exhibiting a fear response is that throughout the course of our positive reinforcement training journey together, he has learned to turn to me for answers or guidance or reassurance. That basically means that over time, he's built up an association of me with good things. So when he's scared and we're together, he naturally will come to me for reassurance. And unfortunately, I don't have video of the sort of early, earlier sessions when he would spook or something like that. It would take a lot longer to get him to sort of settle down and i mean he's not the spookiest horse so he doesn't have these super big responses but it took him a while to learn that he could come to me when he was nervous previously i would just sort of have to wait until the fear response settled or he would come to me um i would go up to him and, and try to get him to come to me to give him a treat and to click and just to reinforce calm behaviors but it did take him a couple of months to get there. All this to say just that the examples that I'm going to show today and the responses that he exhibits in these examples are the result of months of training or conditioning him to come to me when he's feeling unsure. And it wasn't something I did like consciously, it just sort of happened. And I think it's a natural response of any animal. It's a natural result of classical conditioning that when the horse associates you with good things, positive feelings, happy times, when they're feeling uncertain, they will come to you for reassurance or for that good thing, which in Merlin's case is scratches or treats or he also, I've discovered over the last few months especially, that praise and like making a big deal out of him is a really strong reinforcement for him. So yeah, that's just a caveat I wanted to throw in before I get to the actual examples, just because it might look like that's what most horses would do, is to come to whoever they're working with 
a reassurance, and that's not necessarily the case if they haven't been shown or taught that they can do that. Horses are flight animals, and normally when they're scared, their response is to run or to spook and to get as far away from the thing that's scaring them as they can. But without further ado, I will now pass over to voiceover Caitlin to show some footage from, it's mostly I think between January and now. The thing that I'm really grateful for about the examples that I was able to find when I was going through old footage is that there's a nice range of sort of uh, levels of severity of spooking. So there's one that he's sort of Here's a noise spooks, but he doesn't do anything. There's another where he has a complete explosion and I'm able to let him get his energy out and then get him to come to me to help wind him down even more. So in this first example, Merlin exhibits quite a small fear response to something falling off the roof and he just sort of flinches and then comes back to me and I reward him by giving him treats and because it wasn't that big of a spook and he shows interest in continuing to work we just continue on with what we were doing before so I didn't really need to counter condition anything because his focus was still with me. A few minutes later in that same session he heard another noise but this one spooked him a little more so he sort of had a flight response but immediately came back to me so I rewarded that by clicking and treating when he got back to me and then I gave him another click and treat when he stayed with me and then I just sort of started asking him for simple behaviors like calm which is his cue for lowering his head because that's a naturally calming behavior for a horse and I have found that it's a behavior that really helps sort of zen him out after he's had a spook. So this session from February was one where I was trying to get him to trot over a raised trotting pole at Liberty for the first time. And unfortunately for us, there was a pesky bird that had made its way into the arena, a friggin pigeon, which I hate. And that was making him really nervous because it kept flying over his head. And as you can see here, he spooks. And just after that, the bird comes into view and lands not too far away. And he really does not like this. But as you can see, like he doesn't get too far away from me and immediately comes back. So I just reward that by clicking and treating and really reinforcing the fact that he came to me after exhibiting that response. And that response is something that can only be built up over time with consistency in responding in that way when they come to you after spooking. It's not really something you can train in the same way that you can train them to smile or to lower their head, but something that they will start to do naturally over time and with repetition. So you can see there that he followed me toward the bird, which was great, and he didn't really flinch when I made it go away, and he stayed with me, and you can see here that he's looking for constant reassurance. So that's something that I'm more than happy to give him. Um, I still don't feed him treats when he's in my space. I make sure to ask for his head away command, but here, as I'm doing that, the bird flies over his head and he doesn't even flinch. I really like these clips because they're an example of how you can counter condition a unique fear response in a matter of minutes. So this is a couple of minutes later and he has a bit of a spook at the bird walking towards him and because of the counter conditioning that I had done a few minutes before with the bird flying overhead, I decided to let him just sort of stare at the bird and then I got the bird to go away which admittedly made him spook but it was a much less severe reaction than he had had before and he immediately came to me and was much calmer in the aftermath of this spook than he was in the aftermath of the previous one which I was really really pleased about because it showed that my counter conditioning had sunk in. So this clip is that big explosion that I was talking about earlier and this is probably the worst sort of explosion response that Merlin has ever had while working on positive reinforcement and liberty and it's actually completely unrelated to the bird even though it was in the same session there was some sort of big noise and he just completely lost it so I just decided to stay where I was rather than trying to get him to calm down and I just let him get that energy out and eventually he does come back towards me you'll see me hold up my whip just as a barrier between me and him because he was coming at me very fast and no matter how much I love him it is a little unnerving to have a horse coming at you so fast so once he had come to a stop I clicked and treated that response and then started asking for those same simple behaviors that I was talking about earlier so head away which is also manners 
and calm. Um, another behavior that I might ask for would be something like targeting my hand. Simple behaviors that he knows and that I can use to redirect his attention from the thing that had scared him to me and our training together. And this is where the idea of counter conditioning comes in because I'm using things that I know he's good at and enjoys to transfer the negative energy from the spook into the positive energy and positive feelings he gets when we do training. So this is a much more recent example from a couple of weeks ago when I brought Merlin into the arena to do our first uh, session oh, in a while. I had given him a few sort of easy weeks. And it was his first time in the arena oh with goodness. the sides down since last year. And he just thought that that was the scariest, most interesting thing. And he did something he's never done before, which is to do the sort of big, fancy, prancy trot that you see and snorting like a dragon. I've never heard him make that noise in my life. This. And he decided that today was the day. The amount of tension and oh, nervous energy that he was boy. exhibiting was something that I knew needed to be expressed. So I let oh him have his goodness. moment, and then here, when he started to speak a little more seriously, mm -hmm. he came to me, and I decided that that was where we would start counter conditioning. Something else I'm going to pop in here and add is that in this case, you can see that he was too stressed to even take treats from me, which told me that he was nearing threshold and that I needed to get his energy down. So that's why I decided to start counter conditioning from there rather than letting him get that tension and nervous energy out on his own. Something I've learned about Merlin over the two years, nearly two years that I've owned him, is that he doesn't spook a lot at visual things, like if the jumps change or if there's something new in the arena, he's very curious about it, but he can be quite reactive to noise. So things like snow falling off the roof, the sides of the arena flapping, which can happen because it's a coverall arena, sudden movement like with the bird or in this case a sort of big environmental change like the sides of the arena being up or down for the first time these are all things that i know through experience that he can and might spook at so it's really helpful to know what as weird as it sounds what type of spooker your horse is so that you can plan accordingly as to how you might respond in situations where those things might cause them to exhibit a fear response. So in this session, rather than doing what I had planned to do, which was to go over his side passing, we literally just went over behaviors that I know he's good at and that he'll succeed at every time to sort of build up his confidence after having such a big flight response as a result of these sides of the arena being down. One of the things I found the most important so far in my journey with positive reinforcement is the ability to be adaptable in what you do during a certain training session. So you might go out and have a certain idea of what you want to do, but because positive reinforcement gives the horse the autonomy to express their opinions and to tell you that they're scared or that they're not interested in working, you sort of have to be adaptable and willing to change what you work on that day. So here, after I had gotten him to calm down after his spook response to the sides of the arena being down, I put him on the line because another horse had come in which normally he doesn't care about but given how many triggers had been stacked I knew that he might respond a little more reactively to the presence of another horse than he normally does so I put him on the line and rather than leaving immediately which would have been my response a couple of years ago I kept him on the line and I just continued to ask him for simple behaviors in this case head away and targeting and once I got a baseline of good energy we left and called it a day. So this final example was just a couple of days ago and my goal for the session was to just do some mountain block work at Liberty, which we did end up doing, but as you can hear, the arena was very noisy because it was ridiculously windy. So I decided to take this as an opportunity to also um, get him used to or desensitize the sound of the arena being loud. As I said, he spooks more at environmental things like noise rather than visual things. So I need to take advantage of certain situations when they present themselves, in this case, a windy day. So once again, I'm asking for simple behaviors and he's more than happy to oblige me in targeting and things like that. But here I start to ask him for hip targeting, which 
for him is still one of his more not complicated behaviors but it's not something he finds as easy as say targeting and you can see that he's just not quite focusing and he decides that nope I'm done I'm gonna leave and that's completely fine he's not interested in working on that particular thing so I decided just to go and put my whip away and he noticed me walking away and was like no I still want to work I just don't want to do that one thing so after I had put the whip away which I was using as a target stick we just redirected and I started asking for calming behaviors which in this case is ironically called calm which is his cue for lowering his head and right here he had another spook but he came right back to me and immediately calmed down and started offering be calming behavior which is something he's actually never done before so it just goes to show that over time he's associating that behavior with positive things after exhibiting a spook response. I'm really glad that I caught that last little bit on camera because it shows the evolution that he's had in the last few months in his responses to scary things. So that is it for this video. I hope you found it useful and that you might have picked up some helpful tips to bring into your own training or to think about when your horse exhibits a spook response. It's definitely not something that I thought I would be able to use positive reinforcement for when I first started it, but it's something that I've sort of learned organically as time has gone on and Merlin has spooked and I've thought about how I can use it to counter condition those fear responses. I'm not saying that you can use positive reinforcement to completely eliminate spooking from your horse. That's not going to happen because they are a flight animal. But I've certainly noticed and learned that you can use it as a way to lower the sort of level of tension or nervousness that your horse has when they find something scary. And to be completely honest, it's been one of my favorite things that I've learned through researching and just delving into positive reinforcement because it really strengthens your relationship with your horse when they get to a point where they feel like they can come to you for reassurance rather than just exploding and exhibiting a full-blown flight response. But yeah, that is it for this video. I'm going to try my best to stick to Tuesdays as my upload day, but to be completely honest, life is just crazy right now. I'm working a few different jobs and I've got crazy deadlines, so it might just be the case where over the next few weeks I'll be uploading when I can. I definitely don't want to go another three weeks without uploading, so I'll do my best to get videos up when I have time and once summer comes I'll hopefully be able to get back to Tuesday as an upload day. But until next time, I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day wherever you are and don't forget to check Merlin and I out on Instagram at KT Equestrian, the same on TikTok, though I don't really post on TikTok that much anymore. And I have a blog, www.ktequestrian.com.